Hello there. Oh, hold on. Okay, there we go. Hi there. I wanted to quickly give a thanks to the Tumblr user Mars Mom Best Mom. They originally made this iceberg, which I tweaked a tiny bit. I added a few things and removed a couple things, but it's like mostly the same. If you like Moomin things, you'll like their blog. They have a lot of really awesome stuff about the Moomin franchise, including a lot of stuff that I didn't even know, and I have not slept for five weeks. So... <laughs> British Moomins. In 2014, Moomins on the Riviera was created. The voice actors of said film were British during the English release. The movie follows the Moomins, Little Mai, and Snork Maiden as they encounter new things at the Riviera. The film is regarded as out of place in the Moomins franchise because of the lack of reference to Tove Janssen's original books. The Moomins in this film don't really feel like Moomins, according to some people. The stir was said to be very bland and outright disappointing. However, the voice actors were still British, so the fandom refers to the film as British Moomins. Also, it's worth mentioning that I haven't watched the film, so I don't know if any of this is true. Hi, it's me from the future. I was wrong. This is not true. Moomins on the Riviera was a book that Tove Janssen created, and I didn't realize that until I was browsing Amazon at 3 a.m. for Moomin stuff that I didn't need. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Tove Janssen is gay. Tove Janssen, the creator of Moomins, is gay. She was in love with a woman named Vivica Bandler. Some of the themes in the Moomin books also correspond to this. Quote, Thingami and Bob speak a language of their own with the same wording that Tove and Vivica used in their letters. The original names in Swedish, Tovislan and Vivislan, I don't think I'm pronouncing it right, but just bear with me, match the names of Tove and Vivica, and it's actually the nicknames Tove used for her and Vivica in her letters. The suitcase that they were carrying was a metaphor for the secret of being queer and in love. They had to hide it, keeping it safe from the Grok, who was trying to take it. When Thingami and Bob showed everyone in Moomin Valley what was inside the suitcase, they thought it was beautiful. So, Moomin Valley said gay rights. Unfortunately, Vivica's life led her elsewhere, but Tove met another woman, Tulik, or Tuti. Quote, Tulik, whose nickname was Tuti, was an inspiration for the character Tutiki, who appears in the sixth Moomin book, Moomin Land Midwinter, 1958. Tulik was a big support who helped her manage her work and provided guidance, just like Tutiki in the story. Tove even said without Tulik, she wouldn't have been able to overcome the creative crisis she experienced when writing Moomin Midwinter. So yeah, gay. Little Mai is a pun. The lowercase letter Mai, from the Greek alphabet pronounced Mai, is scientifically used to signify a micro-unit. In other words, Little Mai is so tiny, her name is literally used to signify a micro-unit. Snufkin's song. In the older version of the Moomins, Snufkin has a fully written song played on the guitar, which he sings, titled, you guessed it, Snufkin's song. <laughs> Jockster. If you've ever been in the Moomin fandom for more than one day, you've probably seen fan art of this cat dad, Jockster. He's the friend of Moomin Papa and Snufkin's dad. He first appeared in the book Moomin Papa's Memoirs. He's a very lazy and aloof fellow, only wishing to live in a fruit tree and eat the fruit as it grows. What's interesting is that after the book and the 1970s series, Jockster hasn't reappeared or been mentioned since. Mimble's family tree. Speaking of Snufkin's father, Snufkin's mother, Mimble, has a weird family tree. Tove Janssen made this family tree, showing how it works. Snufkin has a mother named Mimble, but also a sister named Mimble, who is Little Mai's big sister. Jockster is presumably not the father of Little Mai and the daughter Mimble, as he's never mentioned to be. Mimble, the mother, also has 34 other children besides Snufkin, Little Mai, and Mimble, the daughter. I know, a little confusing. Moomin x Snufkin. I could totally just not explain this and just move on, but I want to take this section as sort of an opportunity to give evidence supporting the ship. So, um... In your room, you say? But I didn't want to miss springtime in Moomin Valley. What did you do? I'll tell you later. I know you're on your way to the Moomin Valley to see all your friends, 
The hedgehog told me the moomin stayed out for most of the winter, just waiting for you to come back. Now, isn't that wonderful? What? What about Moomin's favorite? You know what? Everything in Moomin is basically evidence. Snoofkin. In the movie Comet in Moomin Land, Snufkin's name is butchered because the original version was in German and then translated to English, where his name was pronounced Snoofkin. My name is Snoof. And my name's Moomin. And I am Little Mai. Hello, everyone. I'm Snoofkin. Do you live out here? Moomin Troll's original name. Before Tove created the book illustrations for Moomins, Moomin Troll was originally called Snork, which has obviously been changed. However, it was a name used for Snork and Snork Maiden. 1969 series. After several successful series, Tove Janssen partnered with a company called TMS Entertainment, who produced Moomin in 1969, which was very violent to say the least. Because of the weird and uncomfortable changes that had been made, Tove Janssen didn't approve of the series and was later revised to be released as New Moomin, with several new changes including a softer art style and less guns? Speaking of guns, whiskey, smoking, and guns. Because of the different children's media regulations, whiskey, smoking, and guns have appeared in many different versions, especially the comics and the 1969 series, obviously. Also, Moomin Papa canonically has a gun. Who Will Comfort Toffel? In 1960, Tove Janssen produced a book called Who Will Comfort Toffel? The book follows a small fellow named Toffel who's frightened by many things, until one day, he meets someone who is more scared. He embarks on a journey to save her, in which they fall in love. What's interesting about this, though, is that Toffel was originally written to be a girl, but was changed due to censorship. This is according to Henry Kaufman's video. I have not seen any articles or proof besides that, but... In other words, lesbians. <laughs> Moomin World This is probably well known in Europe and literally anywhere but the Western world, but in Finland, there's a Moomin's theme park. In the theme park, there's a life-sized recreation of the Moomin House and other locations in Moomin Valley. People also dress up as Moomin characters. I find this hilarious because everyone is dressed up in cartoony characters, and then there's Snufkin, who's just a real ass man. Snurkin E. Moomin who said, Snurkin E. Moomin who said, I probably pronounced that wrong, but was the last Moomin's picture book, published in 1980. It was never translated to English, but it roughly means the unwanted guest. It follows the story of Moomin and Little Mai following the trail of an unwanted intruder in their home. It's illustrated with photos from a model of the Moomin's house, which is now displayed at the Moomin Museum. The Martians. There are canonically Martians in the Moomins, which means there's life out in space. Also, Mars, who submitted the original iceberg, said they were gay, and I believe them. Decapitation. Trolley Canisian was a Finnish stage play directed by Vivica and written by Tove. Which I'm sorry, I probably pronounced it wrong, but just I'm I'm American, I'm sorry. Which featured people in Moomin's suits. There was also another instance of people in Moomin suits, Moomin Trollette, which was a live action series produced in 1969. Nice. In both, actors would remove the Moomin's heads to reveal themselves as a real person. Moomin Troll is a title. When Moomin Papa was younger, he was referred to as Moomin Troll. Could it be possible that when Moomin Troll gets older, he'll be called Moomin Papa too? It's like a weird title loop that also means that when Moomin Mama was younger, she could have been called Moomin Maiden, just as Snork Maiden is called as such. Manhattan Dynamite. I don't know much about this, but I believe the gist is that there was a shirt that was produced with Moomin Papa and stinky drinking moonshine? So, you know, good vibes and all that. The Phaser Mug. To understand this, you also have to understand that the Moomins has a reputation of collecting valuable mugs, like Moomin mugs. Think of it as like a tiny version of the Beanie Babies thing that happened. Anyways, this is the 29th Moomin mug, or the Phaser mug. It's crazy rare and valuable, selling for... Holy cow! So anyways, this is seen as the holy grail of the whole mug collecting thing. Silk Monkey. In the Comet of Moomin Land, a silk cat is introduced. They were originally a silk monkey, but changed in later revisions. Tove Janssen made them originally a monkey because her father had a monkey. Garm. Garm, a Finnish satire magazine from the 1920s, was Tove Janssen's first job as an illustrator. The magazine would, quote, take a stand against political issues using satire. Such illustrations would mock some very horrid people. 
Anyway, what's interesting about this is that Tove started illustrating when she was 15. Good for her. Moomin Voices. Moomin Voices was a full album from 2003 that featured modern adaptions of songs that Tove Janssen and Emma Tara had produced. It feels spiritual, doesn't it? Shiapavol Shnikva. Shnikavol Shnikva, or the Soviet Moomins, as the fandom has vaguely deemed it, is a very weirdly interpreted Moomin series. The series in whole is only three short films, or episodes. The animation style is a weird cutout kind of papery thing? Anyways, the characters' designs are very whack, but I think the rest of the series is mainly the same. Moomin Cafes. This is probably also more well-known, but it's still worth a mention. There are Moomin-themed cafes, and they place Moomin stuffed animals on seats. It's just cute. <laughs> Life of the Little Trolls Life of the Little Trolls, or this, is an Armenian Moomin short with a very interesting animation style. Mimla. Mimla, or another translation for Mimble, the mother of 34 kids, was slang within Tove's friend group, meaning sexual intercourse. Nice. Diafilm. Diafilm, who produced a Russian version of the Moomins, also known as What the Fuck, was a terrifyingly wonderful version of the Moomins that is less known. There were three films produced by Diafilm, which is either a way to produce film or a company, I don't know, but they produced three films, Common in Moomin Land, The King of California, and Overgrown Moomin House. Moomins and the War The Moomins were created during World War II. Tove Janssen wanted to spread a peaceful and uplifting world rather than the cold and current one. November in the 90s In most adaptions of the Moomin books, there has been an adaption of Moomins in November, the final book Tove Janssen wrote in the series. However, there was never a November episode in the 90s series, but there was concept art that was thrown around, showing that there was a possibility of the episode happening. For some reason, it was never produced. Moomin Games Because of the large diversity of the franchise, there has been numerous games made for Moomins. There are so many interesting things about this topic, I might just make a separate video entirely covering this. But yeah, I can't believe Moomins is in Fortnite. Trolle Cassine Trolle Cassine, or Troll in the Wings, was the first Moomins stage play. It premiered in the Little Theater in Helsinki in 1958. The play was directed by Vivica and written by Tove. The Grok Eats People It has been implied that the Grok eats people, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Thank you. <laughs> Lady of the Cold Design In the Moomins books, Tove illustrated every character in the franchise. If they were mentioned, they had a face. Besides, Lady of the Cold, that is. Mars, the person who made the iceberg, has suggested the reason for this is because Lady of the Cold is portrayed as a force of nature or otherworldly. Thus, later adaptions needed to improvise her design. Moomindale portrays her as a cloaked figure without a face, compromising with the fact that she hasn't been seen, quote unquote. Opovia Dania Moomincuf portrays her like this, which is apparently faithful to the original book's description. The 1990s series, or the version you've most likely seen, is a very interesting take on her appearance. Mars has said that them and their friend called this the Pokemon Lady of the Code, which I thought I'd mention because that's funny. The last interpretation, made by Taliki, is seen at the Moomin's Museum. She's again faceless, appearing as a chubby, veiled woman. Tove finally illustrated this drawing of her, solidifying her design. However, we have only ever seen her from the back. In other words, the Lady of the Cold's face will never be truly known to the world. Moomin Horror Don't worry, I won't put anything scary on the screen. But, apparently, before the Moomin stories, there were paintings of dark Moomin silhouettes in unsettling scenarios. The only image that I could find of this is the original one on the iceberg. Sellout Moomins You might think that the Moomins have an advertised product placement. Well, you'd be wrong. One of the most prominent product placements is Phaser. Disney tried to buy the Moomins. At one point in time, Disney legitimately tried buying the Moomins, which Tove rejected, thankfully. Minnie. In the original Iceberg, Mars mentioned that there was a character in the unwanted guest called Minnie, but because of how utterly hard it is to look at the book, 
and the lack of information about the character, I couldn't find anything. If you know who Minnie is, please let me know. I don't know how to pronounce this, just look at the title. In 1953, a newspaper was published with the short story of Moomin's Midsummer Madness, except this was years before the book released. There are some notable changes in the version of this story. Snufkin finds Little Mai simply through fishing, Little Mai doesn't sing her song, and she's also the one spreading the Hattie Fattener seeds instead of Snufkin because she's small enough to slip through the fence. There is no flood, and Little Mai has claimed she's run away from home. And lastly, Snufkin is willing to let the kids stay at his... cabin? Although he does state that he'll return the kids to their parents later on. Full 1978 Philly Junk film. In 1978, a film was created called This or the Philly Junk who believed in disasters. It's actually regarded as lost media as only a few scenes of the short exist. It's interesting to note that Mrs. Philly Junk's mother and father was shown on the walls, which was approved by Tove Janssen herself as she had a hand in set design. In Gist, in the credits of the 1973 Christmas Advent Calendar, or Yuli in Mimindel, I think, there is credit to a woman called Iniest, or The Guest. She is shown as a green-faced lady. Philly Junk is a World War II widow. I think this is more of a theory than like an actual like evidence, but anyways, Mars has suggested this on the iceberg and I thought it was interesting. War episode. In the 1960s Moomins, the version before it's revised, Moomin Troll drives a tank and goes to war. And if you remember what I said earlier, it's important to remember that this is exactly what Tove Janssen did not want. <laughs> Electric chair. In episode 10 of the live-action Moomin series, there's a chair covered in lamps, which is conceptually an electric chair which is kind of a terrifying concept, and you might be thinking it's stupid I'm bringing this up because it's lamps, but what? Moomin Valley is a cult. A lot of people outside of the Moomin House and Moomin Valley have commented that the Moomin House is very strange. It's kind of interesting to think about, but again, it's kind of just more of a theory. Grok is a Finnish government cover-up. The Grok is real, but because it's only so popular in Finland, it's hard to research this topic. I'm joking, if you couldn't tell. Every Moomin book is personalized. I'm just gonna read what Mars wrote for this. Tove Janssen's experimental AI adapts and subtly creates a slightly altered version of the story tailored specifically for you, appealing to your subconscious in ways you don't even notice, as well as attempting to mess with you and study how you react to it. Have you ever read someone else's Moomin book? Have you ever felt like something was just a little bit off? That's why. That's how. This is much more than the simple experimentation with procedural generation. However, there are many layers to this, and some of them are more sinister and malicious than others. Moomin is, at its core, an insidious and evil work of human creation. So yep, that's the Moomin's iceberg. Thanks for watching, and remember, Snufkin and Moomin are gay.